How did more complex eukaryotic cells come about? Well, in order to understand the theory of endosymbiosis, as we will in this lesson, we want to first compare and review the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells very quickly. Prokaryotic cells, very small compared to eukaryotic cells, um, simple, not a lot of um, complex organelles, um, you know, just have ribosomes uh, and no nucleus um, as seen in prokaryotic cells, but there's a nuclear membrane in eukaryotic cells and um, major organelles in eukaryotic cells, um, very simple few organelles in prokaryotic cells. And we could go on and on and compare these two types of cells. Well, what evolutionary biologists were wondering is how did these cells come about? Um, and which came first and how did eukaryotic cells just come about? So this is, um, this is one way of explaining how eukaryotic cells formed. Um, it's called the theory of endosymbiosis. We can learn a lot from that word to determine what the theory is. So the theory basically states that eukaryotic cells, such as those seen here, um, evolved when early prokaryotic cells, like those seen here, developed a symbiotic relationship um, with the ancestors of these eukaryotic cells. So maybe these are the ancestors, and I'll put ancestors here, of u ancestral eukaryotic cells. Okay. So let's explain. Um, for instance, eukaryotic cells appeared on Earth about 1.8 billion years ago, uh, much later than than uh, their 3.5 billion years ago, um, you know, counterparts. So the true one, true uh, eukaryotic cells um, are much newer than those those older prokaryotic cells. So let's explain how this works. Endo, meaning in, and symbio, or living together. Okay, suggests that, um, just by the word, that eukaryotes, eukaryotes and prokaryotes um, likely lived very closely with one another. Okay. Um, prokaryotes may have even entered inside of eukaryotes, forming the first, uh, first nucleus of a eukaryote. Um, and they entered perhaps as, you know, uh, undigested um, prey or as parasites into, into these cells. Um, and then they formed symbiotic relationships, so they serve some purpose inside this cell. For example, we take this mitochondria here, that maybe was uh, an example of a prokaryotic cell living on its own, digested by a eukaryotic cell or entering a eukaryotic cell in a parasitic form, um, and then um, forming a symbiotic relationship, helping the cell in some way, um, and in this case, form energy. In this bottom picture, you see this green organelle here uh, with photosynthetic function entering a eukaryotic cell to form modern chloroplasts. So modern chloroplasts and mitochondria with their own very distinct DNA, unlike any other organelles, help us prove that, um, that these may have been separate cells, separate prokaryotic cells living on their own. Therefore, mitochondria and chloroplasts are considered to be modern-day endosymbionts of what were originally thriving cells. Um, the fact that they also have ribosomes and, uh, like I said earlier, the DNA um, that were similar to prokaryotic cells, and they also, the fact that they reproduce by fission uh, independently from the rest of your cells in your body strongly supports 
this endosymbiont theory.